Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 127 of my poker vlog. For this one, I head up to Daytona Beach, Florida to commentate their new live stream, as well as play some cash game, and we're going to get right into some hands. We arrive at Daytona Beach Racing and Car Club, came out here to commentate their new live stream that they're going to have running much more often cash games as well as their tournament final tables. Yeah, Ted's going to waste no time with top two. Plenty of diamond draws get paid by sometimes 10-9, 7-8, over pairs. Ted knows his hand's good right now, and he's just going to try to get money in as quickly as possible while his hand is Curtis, somewhat vulnerable. Curtis flats and Matt gets out of the way. Now that might save Curtis some money. Might cause Ted to slow down a little bit. It does. Curtis gets a one street of safety. Curtis going to rip into him here for 200. Yeah, Ted's probably just going to call this. and yep. 250. 250 was the bet, and he just flats. Pretty safe just call. Unlucky Curtis going to see the bad news here when Ted flips over his 10 jack. Yeah, super unlucky to run two pair into two pair right into the same guy the hand after he he stacks you. There's going to be some choice words for them on the pickleball court later. Players are rocking some of the best merch in the game. Oh, that's a nice shirt. Oh, boy. Hopefully I'll be on the live stream table instead of commentating it very soon. But we're definitely going to jump into some cash. On the first hand of note, there's an under the gun straddle with two limbs. I raised to $55 with ace, king of spades. Definitely a strong hand that I'd like to put more money into the middle with. So this raise, only the button and one of the limpers call. So we're going three ways to a flop. Flop is 10 4, four one spade. Pretty good board for my hand, all things considered. I have all the over pairs, and unless my opponent has exactly ace-10, they likely miss completely, so this is a pretty good c-bet spot. If I'm called, there's plenty of spades and phase cards that give me a bunch of two barrel opportunities. So I continue with a very small down bet, like I would if I have aces or kings or any of the over pairs. I only bet $35, and this proves to be enough as both players quickly fold. Boom! That just happened. Likely missed. Ace high was probably good. On the next interesting hand, there is a button straddle by me. When three players limp, I decide to raise up a suited ace seven of diamonds. I make it $40, but like to play a bigger pot when I have a suited ace and I have position. And all three limpers call. So we're going four ways to a flop of ace seven four with one diamond, two spades. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> this just got real. Pretty much one of the best boards I could ever hope for when I'm playing ace seven. So when it checks to me, I'm gonna bet small again. Would like to just build a pot here, get, get paid by spade draws, maybe a five, six suited, any of that stuff. And all the worst aces are likely gonna pay off a few streets of value. So I bet $40 and early position player raises to 110. And then the cutoff calls. Now, unless this opponent has exactly pocket fours, I probably have the best hand. The opponent could raise with an ace jack, ace 10 type holding. Opponents could call with spade draws and straight draws. There's plenty of hands that would play this way that I'm still beating. And I would like to get all the money in now while I'm confident I have the best hand. Especially blocking top and middle set feels pretty good. So I re-raise all in for approximately $800 effective. The initial check raiser folds, but the player who called the 110 decides to call a second time. And Daytona Beach, we are able to run it twice on any all-in, and we agree to run this one twice. He shows the ace five of spades, so he's got a combo draw, but we're still very much ahead. Well, that's a straight then. First run out goes to the spades. And second run out goes to the spades. That poor old lady. What the hell just happened? So that's extremely disappointing. Flopping top two, having a 60% plus advantage and losing two different times. Definitely not what you expect. You run it twice to reduce variance, but guess this one was just gonna go his way no matter what. Nice hand in that guy. Please take a moment and subscribe. 
but that's all right. With a button straddle, the small blind slash under the gun player calls. I'm in the big blind with pocket queens. Definitely a welcome sight. Gonna help me get out of this hole. I raised to $45. Can definitely size up because these opponents seem to be calling pretty much any sizing. Flare to my direct left calls, the cutoff calls, and the limper fold. So we're going three ways to a flop of ace, 10, deuce. Always an ace out there. More so when you have kings, but queens hurts just as much. I decided to check. The opponent to my direct left bet's $45. A small bet. When the cutoff folds, I don't think I can fold queens to just one bet. I wish there was at least a flush draw out there that my opponent could be value betting, but there are some tens in his range that I think would play the same way. When the turn is the ace of spades, well, two aces are definitely better than one. It definitely reduces the possibility of my opponent having an ace. But he goes all in for $128. And I'm just really not going to fold second pair to this. I mean, if he has an ace, it's good for him, I guess. Suppose this isn't the best play as I double block the king queens and queen jacks and the gut shot straight draws that are even possible to be bluffs. So if my opponent was deeper and the jam was maybe 200 or more, I'd probably just fold. But for 128, I, I simply cannot get good. away from this hand. My opponent has ace nine. Must be nice. Off suit. What a fun game. Just call 45 pre with ace nine and just spike it against queens. It's always the bad aces that crack these hands too. It's never like ace king. Ugh. So that was all the noble hands from the first day I was there. This is day two is why the angle is slightly different. First hand of note from this day, I raised 15 for middle position with 8-7 of diamonds. Get immediately 3-bet by my direct left to 45. Okay, easy there, Abercrombie. And it folds back to me. I'm not really trying to get exploited to just fold to every 3-bet. Gotta defend some of them. And against the standard 3-betting range, I think 8-7 specifically does very good. It will always be live against like ace king, ace jack. It has pretty good odds to, to crack over pairs. So this is one of the better three bet defending candidates I'll ever have. So I make the call. I'm happy to flop a flush draw on king 10 deuce two diamonds. However, this board's definitely better for my opponent. He's got pocket kings, ace king, maybe some queen jack some of the time, pocket tens, you get the idea. And my opponent bets $85. Almost pots it, but I can't defend, flop a flush draw, and then fold. Seems kind of ridiculous to give up right now i'm gonna make the call on this one i'm happy to turn a flush immediately with the queen of diamonds thinking against the standard range of like aces kings ace king maybe some king queen i think my opponent would just check this card back a lot of the time so this is definitely not solver approved and i probably don't really have bluffs to do this with besides exactly like ace 10 ace of diamonds but i'm just gonna lead this one i don't want this to check through i bet 100 my opponent makes the call great to see that can we not pair the board one, one time, time dealer this is that time four of clubs a brick if i've ever seen one oh, now because my opponent potted the flop and then called a hundred dollars on the turn i'm gonna go big with this one rep either i have a made flush or i have just the ace of diamonds i go all in for approximately five hundred dollars like this move i think it puts like pocket kings ace king into a gross spot pocket kings more because you know he beats all the two pair combinations but my opponent pretty much snap folds so i'm not sure that there was a sizing i could get called on this one but happy to take down a decent sized pot definitely better than the day before <laughs> on the next interesting hand i have pocket queens for a second time hopefully this one goes better with one limp i raise to twenty dollars the button and the big blind call so we are going three ways to a flop of king 4-4 four, four. always an over card just always similarly to the last time i played i think this kind of relegates me to check calling at least one street and seeing what develops sure i have the best kings in range and i can lead some of the time repping ace king king queen things such as that but i think i'm happy to just check call with some of my stronger hands like pocket queens on the flop it checks through the turn is the five of spades now creating a full rainbow on board i check again think that most players that had a king would probably have bet by now so thinking i have the best hand i would like just like to get to show down as cheaply as possible however the button bets 35 dollars nothing i can really do here besides just call i guess he could have like six seven some of the time maybe ace five maybe eights nines tens things like that so there's plenty of hands that would play this way that i beat so i'm happy to make the call here when the river is the ten of spades 
I check. Hoping my opponent doesn't fire, but if he does, I probably just have to call him down. He chooses to check this one back, and I announce queens, and he says queens are good. So, happy that queens redeem themselves slightly. We win another small one before a final hand of note. We pick it up on the flop as I bunch Gerald $10 and there were five limbs and I choose to just check my option with a six of clubs. I check because if I raised, the sizing I have to do would be like 80 or 90 and all the hands that would call me would have me crushed. You're not really getting a worse hand to call at that sizing and so happy to just take this hand and hopefully flush over flush someone. However, uh, we get the second best result on a flop of ace, jack, six two spades very happy with that the under the gun player bets 65 dollars flopping two pair feels really good having position i think is even better but this is technically an over pot size bet so we're gonna proceed with just a call because he's kind of repping nuts or nothing when we make the call the turn is the deuce of diamonds a brick if i've ever seen one but it does not slow down my opponent he bets 110 dollars at this point I guess I'm feeling gun shy. Last time I jammed with two pair, my opponent had a flush draw that got there. So I think I'm happy to just call turn and then bet river on any non spade river. Don't really expect my opponent to have backdoor diamonds all too often. So I call the $110. The river is the four of clubs best brick i've ever seen and my opponent bets 100 dollars now at this point i really can't see a hand that would bet all three streets that would call a raise that is worse than a6 i actually think my opponent has ace jack a lot of the time or just missed spades the down bet river really just confused me to be honest i felt like if i raised to like 300 and he just jammed on me it would just be the most disgusting spot ever and it would just always be pocket jacks uh, so on, i choose to pair. just call this one i announced two pair he says two pairs good my opponent claims that he had ace king and because he was under the gun on a button straddle he was going for the old limp re-raise with ace king so happy i did not raise pre-flop as he probably would have forced me out of the pot he definitely had one of those hands that would have called a raise and been behind so kind of mad i missed out on some value there but we will take a final decent sized pot to end this daytona session for the second day of this daytona trip I'm in the game for $700, out of the game for $1614, which is a profit of $914 across four hours equates to $226 an hour or 45 big blinds an hour. Unfortunately for me, the day before where I had the two pair cracked by a flush, I also had two pair over two pair. I dropped $1,300, so this will be a $400 in the negative trip. Unlucky for me. Yeah, I wish the previous day run bad didn't occur because would have had a pretty nice win. Also ran a flush over flush in that session too, not caught on camera. Disappointed to drop the $1,300 the day before. Happy to get some run good back the second day. And if you followed away at this point, thank you. I appreciate it. There will always be more to come next week. I expect videos to be coming out a lot more frequently coming up. So stay with me and I will see you on the next one.